the uh, library, and I'm delighted that you're here as we do something that we've been wanting to do for a long time, and that is have a uh, publication, a book, with a selection of Charles Cummings' uh, Knowing Newark uh, columns, and also uh, to launch a website, a companion website, that uh, over the course of the year will uh, include all 500 of the columns that um, he wrote over a 10-year period. Uh, of course, an occasion, this occasion also gives us the chance to remember our dear friend Charles. Uh, it's been 10 years since he died, and one of the things I find startling as I have conversations around Newark is that there are an increasing number of people who never had the chance to meet him. Uh, so it is good to pause tonight and to, uh, to remember Charles. Uh, to help us do that and to help us launch this book and the website, uh, I'm really pleased that Jim Wilsey, the former editor of the Star-Ledger, uh, and Liz Del Tufo, the president of the Newark Preservation and Landmarks Committee, and Junius Williams, the chair of the Newark Celebration 350 uh, Committee, are all here tonight uh, to help us uh, mark this occasion. After they talk, I'm going to come back and describe the project um, uh, a bit and uh, hand out some thank yous, and then we'll have a chance to uh, uh, mingle and carry on our conversations. You should each have a copy of this book um, uh, at your chair. If you don't, there are a few extra around here, then we'll make sure you get one. But Jim, if we could start with you, that would be great. Let me tell you a little bit about how the columns came to pass. Uh, we'll take it back in time to 1995, 96. Uh, I was new to the paper, and I had an assignment to to pep the thing up. <laughs> and those of you looking around, <laughs> there's plenty of people in this room who know what that meant. And, so we, uh, we set out to do a lot of stuff. We, we got pretty ambitious in a hurry. And one of the things that we wanted to do was reconnect with the city. It, was, it's, it seemed to us that there had been kind of a... We were in the, we were in Newark, but we were not of Newark. And it had been years since the word Newark appeared in the masthead of the paper. And it, it, was, it was kind of a... I don't know, for the want of a better phrase, it was almost a feeling of benign neglect on the part of the, the paper toward the city where we professionally lived. So we, we tried to do a bunch of stuff. We, uh, we sent new people over to City Hall, where the reception was mixed. And, uh, <laughs> uh, we paid more attention to the courts and to the schools and, and the life of the city. And one of the things that we did uh, was have a weekly section uh, that was tailored just for people who lived and worked in Newark. If you were outside the city, you never saw it. And the challenge there was to have a good steady flow of readable material, stuff that would make people and advertisers uh, come in every week and, and pay attention to Newark this week. Enter stage right, Charles Cummings. <laughs> And looking around here, I bet there's plenty of people in this room who remember the first time they met Charles. Uh, I do. Uh, he came over to the paper one day, I don't know why, he was running some errand, and I was, I was introduced to him. And this began uh, a ten-year bromance of, of the highest order. Like everybody else, I was much taken by his charm and his vivacity, and most of all, the, this deep reservoir of knowledge about the city, told in a very entertaining, accessible way. So we cut a deal. And for the next 10 years, he wrote a weekly column that appeared in the paper. Uh, he, would come, he would come over every week clutching his type-written manuscript. <laughs> uh, no, no 
word processing for Mark Charles. <laughs> and it would be dutifully retyped. Barbara Kukla was here, was the proprietor of that feature for some time. Uh, we would often have to, it was beautifully written, uh, and the resources of the library were, were a great benefit for it because we had pictures and they were in the book uh, as well. We had to trim it occasionally. Uh, no one ever accused Charles of writing too short. <laughs> so we would kind of compact it a bit and then ran it for, uh, for 10 years where it had a tremendous following and served a variety of functions, not the least of which was to be kind of a tutorial for me and a lot of other people who were new to Newark. We learned a lot about the city just by talking to Charles and reading the columns. And often, what Charles would write in the column would lead to something else in the paper. Uh, early on, he wrote a piece about, and I, it's on the website, I assume it's in the book, uh, about the origins of the Iron Band. And, and how it got settled. So uh, that sounded cool. So we sent a reporter and a photographer to the Iron Mountain, but more point, to Portugal, and wrote a special <coughs> section called Here and There about the connections and the, and the delicate network that existed between two places. Uh, he wrote another piece early on about uh, how the Passaic River, the history of the Passaic River, had <coughs> turned Newark into a, a vibrant and vital poet at court. So I asked the reporter, Judy Pete, to go get a canoe and <laughs> trace, trace the river from its first little trickle up there in Morris County, all in Newark. And that was another case of mixed reception. So uh, uh, it worked out fine. It was a good deal for us, it was a good deal for Charles. Uh, we got a lot of stuff that the uh, readers appreciated. Uh, and it gave Charles, I think, a vehicle, uh, an outlet for this tremendous amount of knowledge and storytelling that was his gift. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Charles passed on, and there was uh, a question that was left in the air. Uh, okay, what, what do we do with this? The, the columns were fabulous. They appeared every every week, but the newspaper is a fairly ephemeral medium. And I remember sitting over at the paper with, with Clem Price, and we were talking about, well, how, what can be done to preserve this body, this incredible body of work? And I said, well, you gotta, it could be put into book form, and, and on the internet, although we didn't exactly mean the internet, then, 10 years ago, the way we meet it now. And I said, but it's going to need an editor. And I got one of these looks from Clem Price. I said, a lot of people have, you know, there was kind of a silence. I said, no, Clem, no. I can't, I can't do it. I got other stuff to do. More silence. Uh, and as a result, I, he would bring it up now and again, and it was kind of in the back of my mind. But it never got done until now. And uh, having spent time on a website and looking forward to spending time in a book, it was done pretty well. And we should all be congratulated for finally bringing home uh, a lot of great work in a great way. So, thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm kind of here to talk about Charles as a, as a friend. I met Charles, I uh, was introduced to Charles about 1974 or so. And uh, shortly after that, um, uh, he called and he wanted, he, he wanted me to take him down to the automobile repair shop. And I said, to pick up your car. And he said, no, I'll explain to you. And um, so anyway, I went over and picked him up. Well, it turns out that um, this was in the 1970s. Uh, Charles had gone shopping, grocery shopping, and um, he parked his car in front of his apartment on Mount Prospect Avenue, carried went one bag into the apartment, came back out, and somebody was trying to jump his car. Uh, remember how good the 1970s were in Newark, everybody? Um, so the next thing you know, Charles uh, calls up the tow truck, and, and he has to take it down to Broadway to get the 
the ignition fix. And Charles is sitting up in the tow truck next to the, the driver, and he looks out the window, and his car is rolling down Mount Prospect Avenue. <laughs> and the car comes to a stop right up against the telephone pole, all smushed in. And so then, of course, the car did not go down to the locksmith. It had to go to the, the car repair uh, place. And Charles was calling me up because he had not picked his groceries up out of the car. I wanted to know whether I could go down and we could salvage his groceries. So we went down and collected the rolling oranges and the apples and the paper towels. And I'm thinking, you know, this guy is not quite as brilliant as they love me to be. <laughs> now, Charles was a wonderful storyteller. Um, for those of you who had the pleasure of, of telling how Sam Miller's uh, taxi was stolen with Sam in the back seat of the taxi, you have never heard such a good story in your life. I don't have time to tell you, but afterward, Richard or I could tell you of, um, about that. Charles was a great storyteller, and he did have a habit of exaggerating. So, if you said to Charles, Charles, you exaggerate. Liz, I told you a thousand times, I don't exaggerate. Right, Charles? A thousand times, right? Um, Charles, Richard, and I bonded during the bicentennial of 1976. And shortly thereafter, the library appointed a new director, and Charles was delighted. Do you remember Charles' face? <laughs> right? And he said, we're getting a new director, and I'm told that his wife <laughs> is a wonderful cook. <laughs> well, Tom and Roxanne Allroots came to the library, and cooking was not Roxanne's favorite thing, uh, but friendship was. And we, Tom and Roxanne, joined us. And a few years later, when my wonderful partner, Don Wallace, appeared on the scene, we became the formidable six. We did everything together. We went to movies, we went to dinner, we went on day trips, we went on cruises, we went on European uh, sojourns. We had adventures and we had misadventures. <laughs> and the biggest misadventure that we ever had, and I don't have time to tell you, but Richard and I could uh, later on, was the day that Richard, Charles, and I were trapped on the top floor of the Palace of Justice in Brussels. <laughs> that was our biggest misadventure. I think in T Charles's life, um, our biggest adventure would be when we were in London and we were there for the Queen's opening of Parliament. All of you who know Charles could imagine what a wonderful thing this was for him. Uh, we also had a very bad habit of falling asleep on trains. And I cannot begin to tell you how many stops we missed because all six of us would be hustling. And the one time that we were going from Versailles to Paris, and I woke up and we're leaving Paris. And I said, Roxanne, we're leaving Paris. And she said, don't tell Richard, he can't travel backwards. <laughs> Uh, we, um, let me see where I am. Charles, Charles had a little problem keeping up with security concerns traveling after 9-11. Uh, our first trip after 9-11 was to Scotland, and Charles had to run Charles down to tell Charles that he had left his belt in security, and indeed his pants were falling down. <laughs> And before 9-11, we were on a ferry going from England to France. There was an announcement, and the announcement said, rather than search everybody's luggage, we are going to pick one suitcase to search. Now, you all know where this story is going, right? Charlie Comings! <laughs> up Charles marches. The suitcase gets opened up in front of everybody as he's rummaging through Charles' shirts and underwear. There it was, the ubiquitous typewriter, because Charles never traveled without it. 
You know, every time I I, I, I drive by um, Charles's memorial on High Street next to the historic courthouse, uh, thank you, thank you, Jody Vincenzo. Um, I can't help but remember uh, the 1970s and how Charles worked so hard to repair what was then a broken city. He had his lecture and his slideshow, and he went tirelessly into the <coughs> suburbs. Kiwanis, Rotary, Ladies Women's Club, Garden Clubs, anybody that wanted to hear about Newark, Charles went. And he told them that Newark was a wonderful city and it should be saved. And you know, I think those people listening to that gentle historian from Virginia, they came to realize that if a man like that loved Newark, then Newark was worth loving. Now, our gang of six, unfortunately, is reduced to four because Roxanne passed a few years after Charles, but we are a formidable foursome, and I know I, I speak on behalf of Richard and Tom and Don when I say that we go forth and everywhere we go, Charles' spirit is with us. Thank you.
So when we got this document, we got a, a document from the uh, from the from the library, more specifically from from Timothy Chris, asking us to be responsible for making this happen. There was, of course, a total agreement that this would happen. The only question was how many of these could we afford to print? And I, I hope maybe that you run out and we have to report, do some more, because just thumbing through it, I find so much in here that's going to be helpful for a project that I'm doing, just based on uh, knowledge that somebody has already thought about some of the, the topics that we need to involve ourselves with. Now the new Celebration 350 is not only going to be present in the library, but we're going to uh, rely, continue to rely on the library for more and more exciting adventures. I see signs of, of uh, Sharp James and, and uh, Mayor Gibson, you're going to be doing something on that. I see the, the bright colors of NC350, that's always good. Uh, our executive director is here, John, raise your hand, John Johnson Jr. Uh, we are very much engaged in uh, special programs. We're going to be uh, hopefully planting 350 trees uh, as a result of uh, Newark Asking Day. Is that what it's called? Giving. Yeah, Newark Giving Day. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm looking at Mrs. Price for, for, for information on that because she is the chairperson of that committee. Uh, we're going to be commissioning a song, which is going to be done by uh, a jazz artist. Uh, Mr. Harris is going to be doing that, along with the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra and a hip-hop artist. We're going to have a Newark song. Uh, so all of this is coming forward. Look for Newark Giving Day. I don't carry these initials around in my head. Too. What, what, is, what is the, uh, the website for, for Newark? Mm -hmm. It's on May 3rd, but I want to I want to give you all the uh, the website on that. So if you know it, well, I don't feel so bad if you don't know. But go to NC350. <laughs> <laughs> NC350. Newark Newark Gives 350. Newark 350 Gives. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Newark 350 Gives. Dot. Four. Dot org. Great. And landing monument. There's another project there. To get the, the, the landing monument will be restored. Oh, so those are three big projects that you can get a hold of and hopefully you will decide that you want to give liberally to any of those causes. We are very much gratified with the uh, work that has been done by our committee and by the people who have been doing good things for us. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, I'm, I'm not even going to try to call all the names, but Bunny is here, and that's Wilma Gray. I keep talking, telling her, all I can remember is Bunny nowadays, but <laughs> Wilma Gray is on our board. Are there any other board members here? Yes. We have Nancy Zach, and of course, our previous speaker is on that board. So we, we're surrounded by people who are trying to do the right thing. So I hope you will enjoy these activities. One more announcement. The uh, big music event that we're going to be doing is uh, on May 13th, 14th, and 15th over here in Military Park. Free event. We will have several nationally known musical groups, all of which have some connection with Newark, most of which have some connection with Newark, as well as several local groups on uh, Friday, the 13th in the evening, in the early afternoon, we have uh, Faith Evans, who's from Newark. On Saturday, we have Naughty by Nature, which is a hip-hop group from East Orange. And on Sunday, we're going to have India, who is a very much uh, uh, a person known within the Latino community for her wonderful Latin music. So, you're all invited to this celebration, and we want to Keep encouraging the, the, the library and the museum and, and all the other people who have come together and uh, helped us to put together some quality programming, of which this is certainly 
and example. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jim and Liz and Junius, uh, for those comments. Um, who lives, who dies, who tells the story? If you've seen Lynn Miranda's uh, musical Hamilton, or are familiar with the music, you know that the show ends with a ballad that includes that repeated refrain. Who lives, who dies, who tells the story? Alexander Hamilton is fortunate that Ron Chernow and Lynn Miranda uh, told his story. And here in Newark, we are fortunate that Charles Cummings told our story. He knew, somehow he knew all of Newark's stories, stories that explain the past and stories that can inspire the future. And he told these stories in so many ways, <laughs> at the desk over there, uh, as the official city historian, but in no way more important than through his 500 Knowing Newark columns that Barbara and Jim brought to the city <coughs> for Star Ledger. Who lives, who dies, who tells the story? In his song, uh, Lynn Miranda has Aaron Burr, Jr., who of course was born here on Broad Street in Newark, add to the refrain. And when you're gone, who remembers your name? Who keeps your flame? I think of this Knowing Newark project as the library's effort to remember Charles's name, and indeed the names of all the Newarkers he chronicled in those 500 columns. Who keeps the flame? The library is keeping Charles's flame. This may sound odd, but I have viewed this project as it's given me a sense of redemption. Because Jim, Glenn Price not only looks you in the eye, but he approached me after Charles' death, said that you wanted to find a way to publish these, and he asked if I might edit them. And I must admit, I quailed at the prospect of checking all of Charles' facts and bringing these columns uh, uh, in shape to be uh, published. So I told Clem no. And I don't know who else he approached, but uh, in, in any case, the idea died. And I've always felt some regret about that. So when my colleagues here at the library, Joe Casal and, and Heidi Kramer, told me that Linda Forgosh, who unfortunately is not here tonight, Linda from the Jewish Historical Society, relayed a conversation that she had at some event sitting next to Jerry Gossman, where they got talking about Charles and saying, once again, wouldn't it be nice if we could put together a few of his columns? Well, when that idea, when that report reached me, I jumped at it. And the first person I recruited was Bob Carter, right there in the center. Um, you all know that Bob's a first-rate graphic designer, and you know that there is no other designer in Newark who has such a sensitive understanding uh, and interest in Newark's history. Uh, but you may not know that if Bob gets involved in a project, you know you're in good hands, and you know it will be done right. So Bob and I met with Heidi and Joe, and we had a brainstorming session. What could we possibly do? And we came up with the idea of a selection of the columns uh, in print, which is what you have in your hands, but also the rather ambitious idea of putting all 500, actually at that point I didn't know how many there were, <laughs> uh, all of his columns up on a website. Um, and that's what we decided to do. This was an approach that uh, didn't occur to me 10 years ago, and I'm not even sure that it was technologically possible 10 years ago. Um, we went to Will McGray, who was not yet retired as director of the Newark Public Library, and she gave her enthusiastic support. We were on our way. We approached the Star-Ledger. They encouraged us to proceed, and they gave us permission.
to extract the text of all the columns from their database, which now the library has direct access to, which is one of the great new resources here at the library. Um, and thank you to Beth, Zach Cohen, where are you Beth, in the back there, who took on the task of tracking down all those columns in the Star Ledger database, transferring them to Word files, and then after that, tracking down the photographs that had originally appeared with those columns. Wow. Um, and thank you, Tom, and George isn't here, but thank you for releasing her to spend her time uh, in that way. Uh, she's going to need a little bit more time, given uh, our task in finishing this project. We selected 31 columns for the book. Uh, I started with that spiral-bound collection that Charles put together for his History of Newark course at Rutgers. I thought that was an initial selection. Let's start with that. Um, and from there, I had to restrain myself. There are only a couple on early Newark history. Uh, we decided to put the emphasis on industrial Newark, so often overlooked, so little understood, and on the immigrant and ethnic groups who have made Newark what it is today. And then you can't do a book like this without an article on the library. And if you have one on the library, you need one on the museum and one on singing groups. So, so there are eight columns on education and culture in Newark to close out the book. Um, I'm also pleased that Philip Roth and Guy Sterling gave permission to use uh, uh, their tributes to Charles in this book. And I know this will be the only time in my life that when something that I wrote precedes something that Philip Roth uh, wrote, <laughs> uh, but so be it. Um, but Philip was really excited that this uh, uh, would uh, take place, and we'll certainly be getting him a copy. Um, George Robb and William Tennyson, sitting in the back row there next to Wilma, agreed, without, I think, quite understanding what they were agreeing to, uh, to proof the text before... Um, uh, we went to press, uh, and as it happened, I delivered the page proofs uh, uh, a few weeks ago, about, I don't know, just hours before you were going to take off uh, driving to, I think it was North Carolina, for an academic conference. But that did not slow them down. Uh, they uh, came back to us with some, uh, correcting some mistakes and spotting some typos, and uh, that helped to move the project along. Uh, you'll see in the back of the book, uh, a page of acknowledgments. And I hope you look at that. Um, they are the groups and the people who provided the financial support to make this uh, project happen for the design, the printing, and the distribution of the volume, and for the creation of the website. Uh, the Newark History Society and several of my colleagues on the executive committee are here tonight and provided the first grant so that we could get the design underway. And then Warren Grover and Guy Sterling uh, added a personal contribution, uh, which, which uh, helped enormously. Guy isn't here tonight, but we will take the opportunity to thank him separately in person. Um, thank you, Warren. Uh, Jerry Gottesman and the Newark, uh, uh, the Edison Properties Newark Foundation uh, provided a generous grant at a critical point. Uh, Jerry and Paula Gottesman hoped to be here tonight. I uh, uh, just wasn't able to make it in the end. We will hand deliver him a copy. Um, more than more. You know, it was their idea, his idea that sparked this new project. And it's because of Jerry Gottesman's support, uh, some property support, that we were able to print 5,000 copies of this book. And we will distribute it for free uh, through each of the branch libraries here at the main library. Um, Junius, we'll, I expect that we'll have a table at your Founders Weekend um, on, uh, in the middle of May, and we will have a bunch of copies there to hand out to, uh, to New Yorkers. Uh, and we hope to distribute it, again, for free throughout this anniversary year. Uh, as I noted earlier, New York Celebration 350 uh, thought the book was a, got, a good idea, but they wanted to focus on making the website available because that might well be of the greatest use to students. Um, I believe that Newark Celebration 350 is encouraging the development of a Newark curriculum for the public schools, and our hope is that this keyword searchable website 
uh, will be of enormous help to students uh, in Newark as they work on projects related to the city, related to the places where their parents or grandparents worked, related to their neighborhoods, related to the cultural organizations and educational institutions that make up this city. Uh, we have the first 100 columns. Actually, I exaggerated. There was a duplication. There are 99 columns uh, on the website, which went live at 10:01 p.m. At least that's last night when uh, the designers uh, sent us the, 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 the finally been linked to the library website. Uh, Bob Hartman, who designed the book, also designed the website. Uh, he suggested that we work with Hector and is it Liches or Liches? Liches and Pablo Mueller of a, a company called Impressum. Warren, they're the ones who designed the Newark History Society website as well. They are fantastic to work with and they can put up with Bob in dealing with all the detail <laughs> and of translating his design into uh, reality. Um, so they're up there. These are, are some screenshots. Every column is illustrated and at the end of this process, this will be the largest collection, I think, of digitized photographs on the web about Newark, because there'll be at least 500 photographs um, on the website. Um, as I say, each one keyword searchable. Uh, we have grouped them into four categories. So you'll see them on the left there, just to break them down a little bit. Within categories, they are listed chronologically. Um, there are, uh, you won't see them on these screenshots, but I encourage you to look at knowingnewark.npl.org, which is where the website is live now. There are links uh, to the uh, uh, Newark Public Library, the New Jersey Historical Society, to the Newark Archives Project, to the Star Ledger, for those who want to go a little further uh, inspired by these columns. Uh, I hope you take a look at the landing page for the groups and communities. I'm stunned by the photograph that uh, the library provided of Martin Luther King uh, on his visit to Newark. He is so alive in this photo. And sadly, it's eight days before he was assassinated. Uh, if you were to key in uh, William Ashby, you would find wonderful photographs of his 100th uh, birthday celebrations and of a younger Leonard Coleman and a younger Thomas King presenting him a, uh, uh, an award. Uh, if you type in Boudinot, you, and I saw this photograph for the first time this morning, you would see afternoon tea behind the Boudinot mansion. Uh, it must have been the Condit family living in that uh, mansion in the uh, late 19th century with this uh, large, grassy backyard and it's where PSE&G Plaza is now. There will be wonderful discoveries in this website. Um, so Junius, please convey our gratitude to your fellow board members on Newark Celebration 350 for making the website possible. And finally, I want to uh, also thank uh, the New Jersey Committee, uh, it was the Committee for the Humanities when I chaired it years ago, the New Jersey Council for the Humanities uh, both for their grant and for their insistence that um, uh, we make sure that we get the word out about the, uh, uh, the book and the website. And Pat, I think the, uh, uh, the press release is ready to go. We're connecting with the, uh, NC350. We just want to make sure we have that written, uh, a supply of books here so that when we go public, they're coming, I think, at the end of next week. Um, and finally, I want to thank Bob Hartman. Uh, it's his skill as a designer and his astonishing attention to detail that made this book so handsome and the website so dazzling. Just one example. Bob traveled to Chicopee, Massachusetts last week when this book went to press and he admitted to me that he insisted that the printers fuss with nearly every photograph in the book to increase the intensity and the depth of, of each photograph, and that's why they pop from the page. Um, thank you, Bob. Thank you. We did it, but uh, Bob and I are also looking at each other and saying, we only have 400 more <laughs> uh, When we went to uh, Junius and others, we said, we'll try to get it done by the end of the year. We'll get it launched before May, and it is, 
but it's gonna it's gonna take some more nights and weekends to um, uh, to edit the columns and get them ready for the uh, for the website. But we will do that. And finally, thank you all for coming.